this week, we get the uh, revival of one of the conference's best rivalries. You guys see what I did there. Um, when uh, Sonny Dykes and the Frogs do come to Waco to face Baylor. Um, so all logic says that TCU should win this game, right? I mean, um, the Frogs still have a lot to play for with that CFP out there. <laughs> They're winning those close games, as we said. Got the number one offense in the Big 12, coming off their best defensive game of the year, so forth and so on. So meanwhile, <laughs> on the other end of the spectrum, Baylor is coming off a what was that sort of performance. <laughs> uh, 31 to 3 loss to K-State. And to me, they looked flatter than uh than Dave Aranda's monotone. I mean, it was just <laughs> not good. Um so there's no chance Baylor plays spoiler here, is there? Man, it's it's a good question. I think this series has been really strange the last few seasons, and it's typically been reversed. Like last year when we talked, CCU would just let Gary Patterson go. It seemed like there was obviously no chance they were going to compete. And then, you know, we know they pulled off the upset. I mm -hmm. mean, even that 2019 team that Matt Rule had that was rolling really well, um, if not for Mayers hitting, I think it was like a 54-yard field goal at the buzzer to send it into overtime, TCU would have won that game as well. They've just kind of had some good efforts. I, I expect Baylor to bounce back and play well. I just think Dave Miranda and Ron Roberts and that coaching staff are, are too good and have too much pride to allow them to come out and have another performance like that. Um, there has been a recipe to slow this TCU offense down the last couple of weeks, which has been bringing a lot of pressure, like blitzes have – you know, gotten to Max Duggan and have caused them to kind of adjust on the fly with what they're doing. So I, I expect them to try to continue that. We'll see if TCU has a counter. Um, I mean, if I'm picking straight up, I'm going to pick the Frogs. But, uh, you know, Baylor's a, a good team. I think we had higher – I had higher expectations for them at least than they are, you know, now before the season. Um, if Blake Shapin can kind of figure something out and play better and this defense plays well, I think they'll have a shot. But – um, yeah, it certainly feels like TCU is definitely the team with more momentum and, and the group that has a lot more to play for. I just can't shake the feeling that it is a rivalry game. I don't know how much it, it means to these guys. It's, it's, it doesn't have the same heat that it did when, when Art and Gary were there. Those, those two coaches truly, I think, hated each other. <laughs> and, and that permeated through the fan base and through the players. But it's, it's still got to mean something. You know, it's it's – the two private schools in the league, they're 90 minutes apart. Like, I think Baylor's going to have some motivation this week. And now you got Kaz Kazadi at TCU. <laughs> I yeah. mean, that, it just still seems weird to me. <laughs> yeah. It's so strange. I mean, I know you guys remember him yelling at TCU. Fans oh, yeah. After. Oh, yeah. We were standing right there. Yeah. <laughs> that game in Fort Worth. And, uh, yeah, it's strange. But – and I think he's made a huge difference. I mean, I, I feel like you see – their ability to kind of win games in the second half and, and cause has played a huge role in that. But yeah, I'm not sure everybody understands the irony of that because <laughs> I mean, he was like, he was in a lot of ways, sometimes the face, he just, he, he has a personality that uh, goes way past strength and condition. Everybody knows who he is. And, you know, I remember in Waco, people loved him. Um, so it's, it's really weird to see him on the sidelines. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. John, what do you say? Can Baylor spring the upset here? I, I don't think they will, but um, I was surprised. Uh, they're only a two and a half point underdog to TCU. Yeah, I, I, saw, I noticed that too. Uh, so, uh, yeah, like Steven says, strange things happen in this series. And I will say in the last 10 years, I think the Horned Frogs generally get a little more up for this game than Baylor. I think, you know, they felt, felt like they were uh, – you know, kind of got the shaft, you know, not getting in the big 12 earlier. And I think they've always kind of had that chip on their shoulder. Now, I mean, this is such a great chance for Baylor to, you know, get revenge for last year, some other games. Uh, I mean, they're, I, I think they're clearly the underdog here. Um, but uh, I don't know. I, I still see the Horn Frogs winning this game. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> It was such a weird uh, game last week for Baylor. Mm. Um, you know, not that K-State won and bounced back and, you know, like they did. Obviously, K-State's a good team. 
but uh just you know as i mentioned how how flat baylor was um it was it was surprising i mean uh, they had honestly i felt like during that three game winning streak they were playing as well as anyone in the conference you know maybe including tcu but you know may, maybe that was who they were playing i don't know i mean two of those games came on the road so mm-hmm. um i don't think you could just dis- completely discount that I do agree with Steven that I think they bounce back and play better this week. Will that result in a win? I don't know. I mean, I, Mm -hmm. I, I still, if I'm picking this game, uh, which I do have to, at some point, uh, I'm picking the frogs, but, um, again, as Steven said, it is a weird rivalry. We certainly didn't see that TCU win coming last year. Mm -hmm. Um, was it Chandler Morris? Yeah, it was. yeah. I I remember saying we'll call from you know ten twenty years from now we'll call that the Chandler Morris game. That was his yeah. his breakout game. The other weird thing about that game there was a lot of weirdness that day. But John, you'll you probably will remember this. Um, and maybe uh, when our computer guy can uh, go back and find my photo I took of of this guy on Twitter. But right in front of the press box. There was a Gary Patterson lookalike. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And, and I What's mean, this guy, this guy looks so much like Gary Patterson. I've ever taken a picture of him <laughs> and going, he's still here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and they won too. And they won. So, you know, maybe he had, uh, maybe they had some good uh, GP mojo there. I don't know. <laughs> but that yeah. was pretty funny. That was funny.